Hey there. So you saw a fitness model walking around the beach with his big blocky abs and you're like, oh, I won't need that. Why don't I build myself some strong core like that? Why don't I get this thick, juicy, strong, big, blocky, etc. abs? So you said, let's watch some videos on abs. You're like, why is this guy talking with a shirt on? It's video about apps. I like to keep my apps private, but nonetheless, today we'll see my top eight exercises for apps, which is a workout focused on uh, two sections in which we repeat the same cycle twice, and it's gonna last somewhere around 15 to 20 minutes. We're gonna focus on all different muscles around the core, not just the apps like the flexors, but we're gonna focus on the back muscles, the core, the deeper muscles on the core that help you uh, breathe and stabilize the spine, the ones that rotate you left and right, the frontal flexors, etc. Because this is what actually gives you a nice, tight, and strong, resilient core that makes it look good. From an anatomical standpoint, the core is quite a complex subject, so we should start with it, shouldn't we? So basically what you should know is that the core is comprised of many muscles around it from the lower back up to the frontal abdominal muscles you see and some muscles help you the frontal muscles help you flex forward show it like this the frontal or abs help you flex the back muscles help you extend back and then you have lateral muscles which help you laterally flex and extend and then you have deeper and more superficial muscles and the deeper muscles work to stabilize the spine and uh, keep uh, your movement safe and uh, sort of stop you or help you with your upright posture, help you breathe and stuff like this. The biggest, most important muscles are the first and the juiciest, frontal flexors, rectus abdominis or what you call the six-pack abs, also divided in upper and lower abs. These helps us flex the core. Next up we have the lateral flexors or the internal and external obliques, they function for lateral flexion and rotation. Obliques can contribute to the overall aesthetics of your core, make it appear more narrow. Then the deeper abdominal muscles, transversus abdominis and diaphragm, muscles which help you with breathing, especially your diaphragm which lowers when you inhale and rises when you exhale. Transversus abdominis is one of the deepest muscles helping with lumbar spine and pelvis stabilization. When training for any muscle, but especially for core, you want to actively think on engaging those muscles because otherwise you can do many reps but not actually indulge the right muscles at all. So for example, think of if you're doing a crunch, right? You want to actively and consciously activate the frontal flexors and do it in a slower and more controlled manner instead of just swinging up and back, right? Let's say you're doing scissors. Make sure when you're lowering that leg, you don't touch the ground and you do it in a little bit slower manner. So instead of just dropping the leg and stopping it, you drop it slowly, activate the lower abdominals and then lift it up. So the structure of this workout is extremely important because in a way it helps us activate the core that will really get the change. Not just make you feel a couple of muscles here in the core for like a minute and then stop. So the idea here is the core works all day long to keep you stabilized and you're not gonna build blocky abs with uh, 10 crunches, sorry. Uh, so the idea here is to continually push throughout all the eight exercises, which is gonna take around five to seven minutes, depending on rep sets, uh, intensity, duration, how fast or slow you're doing it. But the idea is to maximally fatigue the core during this one section, then rest, a little bit in between like three to four minutes and then repeat the whole thing again right so we have eight exercises that's this is eight we have eight exercises you do all eight then you have a three minute pause and you do another eight of those in between exercises if you need to position or set yourself up in a different way or see the exercise it's okay to take three to five seconds in between to just set up don't take more if you take more don't tell anyone no one should know about this the first exercise, exercise number one, is the reverse crunch. The reverse crunch is one of the best ways to start your abdominal workouts because uh, it activates large core musculature, so the upper, the lower abdominals, and even the ones on the side the obliques, and even the deeper muscles, they're all activated by this exercise. And 15 reps somewhere at around medium speed. Lying down on your back, hands on the floor, lift your legs off at 90 degrees. You can grab heavy object behind your head for support. Slowly by contracting your core, shift the weight back, activate upper abdominals and lift your feet up. Make sure you squeeze the pelvis and slow down your weight back.
Exercise number two is the side bridge where you are pushing with your hips up and activating the lateral flexors. This one's great for building this shredded, nice looking oblique muscles. Do 15 reps on each side and make sure you squeeze it up half a second when you're up there. Lying on your side, support your weight with your forearm. Slowly push with your hip upwards and engage your lateral trunk muscles. Do so in a slowed and controlled manner, getting back a few centimeters before you touch the ground, lift back up. You want to do crunches with your hands behind your head, but do short ones and activate um, and consciously activate and engage those upper abdominals instead of swinging your whole weight up. I used to love swinging the whole weight up type of crunches, but then I actually realized it does damage and it shortens the iliopsoas muscles, which then leads to poor posture, etc. So make sure you do very, very short and tight squeezes in your upper abdominal areas aim for 15 to 20 reps in total exhaling your way up lying on the ground with your hands behind your head perform a short crunch and stop at the moment your scapula leaves the floor hold half a second and get back instead of laying down fully on the floor before you rest your head lift back up slowly The next exercise is dead bug. The dead bug is, I love this exercise, it really activates and targets the good muscles and the deeper muscles in the core. So you basically have a weight over your head and you're lowering one then the other leg. Uh, make sure you get a medicine ball or something that's smoother and squishier, some weight that you can control so it doesn't fall on your head and hurt you. Also going back will make it more intense, going over your head will make it less intense. Keep that in mind. Lying down on your back, pick up weights like medicine ball optionally or extend your hands overhead. Lift your legs flexed at 90 degrees in the knees and slowly lower and extend right leg down then pick it up, squeeze in the center. Switch on the left side, extending and lowering down then back up. The further back your weight is extended, the higher the demands on the core will be. is the bent knee V crunch. This one really targets the deeper muscles and even the obliques. It's a very good way uh, to really get that core working. You support your weight with your hands in the back and you're basically uh, swinging your legs back and forth, but they're always off of the ground. Uh, do a 20 reps in a slightly quicker manner and try to keep a neutral spine as neutral as you can. Sitting down, place your hands back for support. Slowly lift your legs off the floor and squeeze everything in the center. Activate your core, flex your knees, bringing them closer to your chest, then extend back. Exercise number six is scissor kicks. Make sure when you're performing this exercise, the leg that is going down is not lower to the floor, but like around five centimeters off of the floor and you're really squeezing and pushing through your uh, lower abdominal muscles. You're activating those to keep the leg off of the floor. And you're also focusing on uh, a slower eccentric movement. So when you go down, you don't just lift your leg to fall, but you go slowly down and then pick it up like that. Lying down, place your hands partially behind your glutes, extend your legs and toes straight, lifting the right leg up, lower your left leg, then repeat again with lifting the left leg and lowering your right leg. 
Keep your spine neutral, tuck your pelvis in and scissor. The next one or seventh exercise is mountain climbers. Instead of the, doing the mountain climbers that you already know about, where you uh, shift your pelvis up and forward, uh, left to right, we're gonna do very slow yogic mountain climbers, where you left to one leg and slowly push your knee to elbow and getting back without trying, without moving the pelvis at all, left to right. Okay, so slower reps, perform 15 to 20 per exercise. In plank position, shoulders over wrist, Make sure you draw a straight line from feet to head. Now flex your right knee and push the touch knee to right shoulder and slowly extend back. The same on the other side, squeezing your core, touch your knee to elbow and extend back. but not least and one of the best for last exercises is the anti-rotation not because you have to stand up but because it sort of enforces a rotation on your body which your body tries to resist and this will then translate in your life in better posture and it can allow you to learn how to stop an unsafe movement and really get back of that rotation activating your core. It is great for stabilization, great for posture, and great for building a resilient core. Perform 20 in total short uh, swings left and right. Do 10 on each side, so 10 on the left and 10 on the right. Standing straight, step wider than your shoulders, tighten your core, move laterally to the point where you feel core contraction, grip strong and do a short twist. Get back slowly in the eccentric phase and push once again. On your way out, exhale and squeeze the core, then inhale on your way back. So that's our end for this workout. Just to repeat very, very briefly, you have two cycles. So you have one cycle of eight exercises, each done for 10, 15, or 20 reps, depending on each individual exercise. No rest in between, or don't tell anyone if you do. Have a little three to four minute pause, and then you repeat the whole cycle again. Expect your core to feel sore, expect it to be tight the next day, especially all those muscles around if you haven't trained them, like obliques and lower back muscles, deeper uh, muscles, etc. If you like this video, please give it a like or a thumbs up, even if it's the same thing. Subscribe down below, let your workout buddies, friends, family know about it if you found value in it. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Oscar. Oscar. <laughs> <laughs>